Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Allie or Wavy Curly Allie. I'm a healthy hair enthusiast just here sharing my tips and tricks on how to help you love your hair as it is naturally. And today we're talking about hair analysis. I know that sounds a little bit geeky, it sounds a little in depth, maybe a little bit more than anything I go into, but I promise you I'm gonna try to keep it neat and clean and tidy and simple to follow. Now, if you're new to my channel or you're new to this healthy hair journey or following the curly girl method, a lot of what I talk about is going to be very useful for you. A lot of this information that I found out from this hair analysis is information that I wish I knew in the beginning and even two years into my journey, I just learned a lot about my hair. <laughs> a lot of stuff I suspected, a lot of stuff that was very surprising to me. Before I jump into all of this though, there is something that I need to address and that is my hair color. So yes, I did go darker. If you are new, I was bleach blonde before and I just went to a darker brunette color. This is closer to my natural hair color. So we did all over low lights, left out some blonde pieces and then just toned them down so that they blended nicely into my hair. So, so many of you have asked me about what the formula is or the exact shades that were used in my hair. I can tell you that she used Redken Shades EQ as the color, but the formula, I'm not so sure. And I'll tell you why that doesn't matter. Because your starting color plus the color used equals the final result. So unless you and I had the exact same starting color, the formula wouldn't matter because it wouldn't give you the same result if we didn't have the same starting color. So I don't have it unfortunately, but I did just ask for a bit of a darker uh, brunette color and she brought me to this beautiful bronze. I may even go a little bit darker, so we'll see. But now that we've gotten that out of the way, Let's talk a little bit about the hair analysis that I did. My main bio was so kind to reach out to me and provided me with this hair analysis. Now this is something I've been very curious about. I've seen others do it and have interesting results, surprising results, have learned a lot about their hair. And I thought, well, this certainly couldn't hurt for me to figure out as well. Now I've been at it for two years. I'm coming up on my two year anniversary of starting this healthier hair journey. And I thought I kind of knew everything I needed to know about my hair in terms of its porosity, its density, the width of my hair strands, the elasticity of my hair, all of these things of course can change over time, but I thought I had them figured out. And this has shown me that I don't. <laughs> and I'm not ashamed to admit that. There was quite a bit of information there that I had assumed and I got correct, but there was still some information in there that I didn't know and there was a whole mess of information that was super helpful. So if you're new to the journey or you've been on it for a while, Keep listening because there might be some really quality content in here that could be helpful to you. I will also say you might want to stick around till the end because I've got a really exciting announcement to make. All right, without further ado, let's jump into it. Let's start with the analysis results. The first topic covered here is porosity. Porosity is important to know because it will help you determine the types of ingredients that will work best with your hair. So high porosity tends to favor protein as it is a bit more damaged and protein helps with structure and low porosity tends to favor moisture because the cuticle is a bit more closed. It has a harder time getting moisture into the hair strand. So just kind of general rules of thumb there. And then there's normal porosity, which has a nice even balance of both. Now, my porosity I'd always assumed was high porosity because my hair is bleached till about up to here. I assume most of it is higher porosity that I've damaged it from chemically treating my hair. This has also seen a fair amount of thermal and mechanical damage as well. Thermal being external weather, the sun, and mechanical just from pulling my hair back. If I haven't put it nicely into an invisible, I've just used maybe a harsher hairstyle, if you will. So. According to this hair analysis, I have normal porosity at the root, normal porosity at the mid shaft, and normal to high porosity at the tips. Now, what I did not find surprising is that the roots are normal and the ends are more high porosity. What I did find surprising was that the middle of it was considered still normal. So I feel like that speaks volumes to my hairstylist for maintaining the health of my hair as I had asked her a million times as we lightened my hair. We did it very slowly and gently and health was really the focus of our appointments when I did this. Of course, there's still some natural damage that was done and shout out to you for keeping my hair as healthy as possible, even after all the terrible things I've done to it. Now, ways to determine porosity from home, they're not foolproof, but they, they're certainly nice guides to use. The first is a cup test. This is not one that I actually promote at all. I don't think that it works very well. I don't know many people that have used it 
to make it work really well for them. So you fill up a cup with water, you take a few strands of hair out of your head, you put it in the cup, and if it floats, sits in the middle of the sinks, it tells you what your porosity is. Now, why I don't like that, it depends on where you pull the hair from your head, it depends on if you have product in your hair, it depends on you if you used a heavy styler or you forgot to rinse out some of your conditioner, that can all make your hair sink. So it's not foolproof. I don't really believe in the cup test. The other tests that I have used for myself are the first one. You take a strand of hair and you run your finger up it backwards. If it's a bumpy ride, then your hair might be higher porosity. If you run it up and it is very smooth and sleek, then it might be a lower porosity. Again, we're referring to open or close the cuticle is. And then if it's somewhere in the middle, it might be normal porosity. The other one that I've used and I do like the most of all of them is the wet test. So how quickly or slowly does your hair get wet when you jump in the shower? When you jump in the shower, does it immediately get soaking wet? It's probably high porosity. If you jump in and it, you have to work it in a little bit, but it still gets wet pretty easily, it might be normal porosity. If you jump in and it takes you a while to work the water in and move your hair into sections, it's probably lower porosity. Again, the cuticle is more closed. You have to work a little bit harder to get moisture in there. General guidelines of things that you could try, but it's been awesome to just have someone tell me instead of me guessing if my hair is getting wet enough fast enough. <laughs> The next one that they talk about is elasticity. Elasticity really just refers back to the protein moisture balance in your hair. Now this is something that I think most of us have struggled with at some point in time in our journey. I have gotten a sense of what my protein moisture balance is just based off of experience, having bad wash days, over moisturizing my hair by accident, protein overloading it by accident, things that I've just come to know by feeling my hair or seeing it that I have entered into one of those spaces. Now. That doesn't work for everybody. That's again, just comes with experience. So if you're new on this journey, a little bit harder to figure out. So the general rule of thumb around the elasticity stretch test on both wet and dry hair is this. If you can stretch a strand of hair and it goes back to its normal position, then it's about normal in terms of elasticity. So you have a nice protein moisture balance. If you stretch your hair and it doesn't return, it stays stretched out, then it generally means you're weak in protein. And if you stretch the strand and it doesn't stretch, it might mean you need moisture. And lastly, if you go to stretch that strand of hair and it just breaks, it means you need both protein and moisture. Again, this is kind of hard to figure out because what is too stretchy and what is not, and did it really bounce back to its original spot? It's a little bit difficult to tell, but some have become masters in it. It might be easier for some to tell than others. So this was very awesome for them to just tell me what it is. Now, of course, this can change over time, but in terms of my elasticity, my wet stretch test was in the normal range. My dry stretch test was just falling into the high range, almost normal. So very important information for me to know in terms of using more moisture or protein in my wash day. Now the next category was the one that surprised me the most. This one actually triggered me to make the phone call to them to have them explain in a little bit more detail. Once they did, I actually had a few aha moments from this. And this is around my hair texture or really the width of my hair strand. So you hear people talk about having coarse hair, fine hair, medium hair. And I had always assumed I was just kind of somewhere in the middle. I'm not really touching a lot of other people's hair to compare it to something else, but to me, texture-wise, it just kind of felt normal. Not true. This entire time, for the last two years, I have assumed I just had kind of a texture that fell somewhere in the middle, and the width of my hair strand just was middle ground, and it's not true. My texture came back as 75% coarse to 25% very coarse. What? <laughs> <laughs> did not see that coming. So I got on the phone with them and I had them explain it to me in a little bit more detail. All right, let me back up here. One way that we can try to determine our hair width or texture from home is by grabbing a strand of hair and rolling it between your fingers. If it's hardly there, you can go without noticing it, then it's considered fine. If you're rolling it between your fingers and it's there, but it's not overbearing, then it might be medium. If you're rolling it and it is obviously there and you can't ignore it, then it's probably coarse or very coarse. So for me, I guess I haven't really felt a lot of other people's hair. I guess it just kind of felt maybe somewhere in the middle. That's not true. <laughs> Apparently it's coarse to very coarse. 
Something also to note here that they explained to me on the phone is that what did I just do? I grabbed a piece of hair that was by my face. How they measure your hair's width of your strand is from the root. So they take that fresh virgin untouched hair or probably the healthiest hair on your head and they measure the width of it there. So feel it up there if you're gonna try this from home and see if it makes a difference. And I can tell you for a fact my hair definitely is hard to ignore when I rub it between my fingers. But they explained that to me and they also explained some characteristics of coarse hair to me, which I did not know. So one of them is that coarse hair is resistant to chemical treatments. So color treating your hair, color might not take as well. Coarse hair also has the ability to grow longer without breaking off. That probably explains why I've been able to maintain my length. So I get a lot of questions about my length. I don't believe in any special growth serums or pills or anything that you can take for it, but I've always had long hair, so it is very hard for me to guide anyone on growing out your hair, but I've always had long hair and I've had the ability to maintain my hair at its length. All right, so on to the next category, which is density. Density refers to the overall strands that you have on your head and mine came back as medium, which is exactly what I had assumed. Now this can also change over time. So for me, when I started this healthier hair journey, I was pregnant with my second son and I was probably about five or six months in and you just don't shed nearly as much hair when you're pregnant. That's just a very common thing. So I had a bit more of high density hair at that time. Now postpartum, when I shed a bunch of hair, I shed all the hair that I hung on to and more, I was a little bit closer to lower density. But now that things have normalized, my son is about one and a half, I'm back to medium density. This feels about normal for what my hair typically is. One way that you can determine or try to determine your density from home is to look at your scalp. How much of your scalp is showing at your part? If you have a part and you can really see a lot of your scalp, it's just hard to ignore it, then you might have lower density hair. If you have a part and you just really don't see your scalp, then you might have higher density hair or more strands of hair on your head. Now, if you're like me and you can kind of see it, but it's really not overwhelming, then you might be medium density hair. So that's one way to determine this from home. So another category that they cover in the analysis, as I mentioned, is product review, where you submit products to determine if those are products they would recommend for your hair type based on the analysis that they've done or if they don't recommend them. So I chose to submit products that I do currently use, really kind of test my knowledge on what has worked for me and see if it was something they recommended, but not only if they recommended it, but why. So based on my hair type, I submitted some of my holy grail items. I'm not gonna go into this in great detail, but they essentially agreed with everything that I sent in, which was great for me to know that it actually was working, but kind of not surprising because I've been using them long enough to know how to make them work for my hair and to know that they do just work for my hair and that my hair does respond positively to these. So it was some InnerSense products, shampoo and conditioner. I submitted Ecoslay rice pudding leave-in conditioner, the Bounce Curl Club and the Fine Cream, which you all know that I live and die by, and the Ecoslay orange marmalade. But not only that, they go into ingredients in those products and why they might work for my hair type and any other thing I should pay attention to. So for example, I call aloe vera my golden ingredient. It's something that my hair tends to love, but if your hair starts to feel sticky after using a product that contains a fair amount of aloe vera on it, it's because aloe vera can cause buildup and they suggest that you clarify. So really important and quality information to know. They also make a ton of care and styling recommendations based off of my hair type from whether or not I should pre-wash or pre-poo to deep conditioning and a reference chart based on my porosity, the amount of time that I should be leaving my deep conditioner on using heat or not on my hair type. So that is kind of amazing. And then they go through a bunch of different guides on how to plop your hair, using root clips, diffusing, suggested ways to refresh my hair type. And then they also went through at the very end, my hair goals and frustrations. So as I mentioned, I submitted a few things specifically around making my wash day last a little bit longer, the how the bottom layer tends to go straight after a couple of days and how the bottom layer tends to tangle the easiest. And they make recommendations based off my hair type on what they think could work for those issues for my hair. And then finally, to close all of this out, there's this very lengthy appendix on everything that they covered, different types of Denman brushes that they, you could use, diffusing techniques, how to pineapple your hair or prepare your hair for sleeping to make it last longer. 
YouTube recommendations. There are several people in here that I recognize. More information than she could ever hope for. So this was worth its weight in gold. I thought this was absolutely fantastic. And to the end where I told you all to hang out with me and wait till I have this announcement, I thought this was so valuable that I actually teamed up with my main bio to give away one free hair analysis to one of you guys. So we're doing this giveaway on my Instagram page. I'm gonna put my handle here. Very simple, go find this post and I will give you very clear, simple, not trying to jump through hoops here, instructions on how to enter. So go to my Instagram, give me a follow, and see my latest post on how to enter for this giveaway. I'm so excited to give one of these away. You guys, this has been tremendously helpful for me to not only just better understand my hair, but look deeper into the ingredients that I'm using to have them call out ingredients in my favorite products as to why those ingredients are working for me or maybe things that I need to pay attention to of yes, those ingredients are working well, but it could do this. I digress, this has been lengthy. I hope it hasn't been too mind numbing. <laughs> if anything, I hope it's just been helpful. But if you can, as always, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, drop them below. I'm happy to answer and please let me know what you'd like to see next and I will continue bringing you all the videos that you love the most. All right, thanks for hanging out with me guys. We'll talk soon.